So hello everyone, I'm Yushun. And in this presentation, I would like to introduce our recent work, Edits, Modeling and Mitigating Data Bias for Graph Networks. So this is a basic outline of this presentation. And I would like to start from the preliminary analysis. As we all know that the information aggregation is a critical mechanism in graph networks. However, a natural question is, does the information aggregation bring unfairness? Let's assume that we have two different demographic subgroups representing two different uh, genders, uh, including males and females. In a certain uh, network topology, if we perform information aggregation and the females tend to receive information corresponding to uh, lower values of attributes. However, the males tend to receive information from attributes with higher values. Then intuitively, uh, such kind of information aggregation could bring unfairness in graph networks. In order to better interpret such an intuition, here we give a very clear and interesting toy example. Still, we assume that we have two gender subgroups and we assume the values here representing the income corresponding to each individual. We assume that for a certain network topology, if the female individuals tend to receive informa more information from individuals with relatively low income. However, the male individuals tend to receive information from individuals with relatively high income then such an information propagation could induce bias. But how does such kind of network topology look like? We give an example that satisfies the two um, assumptions we made before. In this uh, network topology, we use orange nodes to represent the female individuals. And we use blue nodes here to represent the male individuals. For females from the pure orange uh, community to the mixed community at the middle, the income of the female individuals uh, increases uh, like it's getting higher and higher. However, for male individuals from the pure blue community to the mixed community at the middle, the income of males is getting lower and lower. In such a network topology, as we can see that if we perform information propagation, the females with high income would tend to interact more with males with relatively low income, uh, which, is align which is in alignment with the two assumptions we made before. So how does the information propagation operated on such a topology look like? We generated unbiased attributes for these two gender subgroups. And then we perform information propagation based on the biased network topology we discussed before and the generated un, uh, unbiased attribute uh, distribution. And it turns out that after information propagation, even if the input attributes across the two gender subgroups um, is unbiased, uh, we still get a biased distribution after information propagation is performed on a biased network topology. And additionally, um, it goes without saying that uh, if we use a biased attributes to perform the uh, information aggregation, we will uh, still get the uh, biased uh, feature, uh, biased attributes after information propagation. So this preliminary analysis told us that um, the input, the input network data for graph networks is a significant source of bias. On the other hand, um, existing works that de-bias graph networks only based on specific backbone models, such as graph convolution networks. So they bear some drawbacks, such as expensive ray training and fine tuning for different backbone models. Now that we have proved that uh, the input network data for graphical neural networks is a significant source of bias, then the natural question is how to de directly de-bias the attribute network data 
for graph convolution network, graph neural networks to avoid those drawbacks above. This is a non-trivial problem, and we mainly face the following three different challenges. The first challenge is how to model bias for two different data modalities. And the second challenge is how to debias the two different data modalities efficiently. And the third challenge is how to debias the attributing networks in a model agnostic way. In order to handle the three challenges, we propose certain um, solutions. To handle the first challenge, uh, we propose two novel bias matrix that directly measures the bias level for the input network data, uh, including attribute bias and structural bias. To handle the second challenge, uh, we propose a framework named edits to debias the two data modalities in parallel. And to handle the third challenge, um, our framework directly debias the attribute network data based on our proposed novel bias matrix. And let's start from the introduction of our proposed bias matrix. And the first one is attribute bias. It's pretty easy for us to obtain the normalized uh, attribute matrix. For each dimension of the normalized attribute matrix, we split the values into two different sets. And then we compute the average Wesson distance between the two sets across all attribute dimensions. And finally, the average distance value is taken as the value of the attribute bias. In the following part, we introduce how we compute, how we design the structural bias. Firstly, we take a weighted sum between the normalized adjacency matrix and the identity matrix. And then we design a propagation matrix with the weighted sum version of different P matrix up to an order of each. And then we multiply the propagation matrix with the normalized attribute matrix in order to get a propagated attribute matrix. And similarly, for each dimension in this propagated attribute matrix, we still split the values into two different sets that represent the values corresponding to two different demographic subgroups. And we compute the average Wesson distance across the um, all attribute dimensions. And the final uh, average value is taken as the value for structural bias. And here comes our proposed debiasing framework edits. In this framework, we have a so-called generator and so-called discriminator. In the generator, we have the attribute devising component and structural devising component. These two components generate the output as the debiased um, attributes and debiased adjacency matrix, representing the debiased network topology. Based on the two uh, debiased output, we do a uh, attribute aggregation uh, from zero hop to h hops away for each node. After this has been performed for each node uh, at each attribute dimension, we will have a vector with a dimension of h plus one representing its accessible attribute value from zero hop to h hops away. And for the two uh, demographic subgroups, there will be underlying joint probability distributions for such vectors. And then we use a Wesson distance approximator to help us compute the average Wesson distance between these two joint probability distributions across all uh, attribute dimensions. And the goal of the two uh, debiasing components in the generator is to minimize the approximated Wesson distance. And this is generally how the proposed framework works. And here comes our experiments. Basically, we perform our experiments uh, based on the node classification task. And we have six different data sets with three of them are uh, web-based networks and three of them are uh, real-world networks from other domains. And we adopt three different uh, graph neural network backbones and two baselines that are state-of-the-art on debiasing graph neural networks 
including Nifty and Fair GN. And for evaluation matrix, firstly, we adopt our proposed two uh, bias matrix. And secondly, uh, we adopt different types of traditional evaluation matrix. For classification utility, we adopt the AUC score and F1 score. To evaluate the performance on fairness, uh, we adopt traditional metrics uh, such as delta statistical parity and delta equal opportunity to evaluate fairness. Uh, for the first part of our experiments, we first uh, evaluate how well the proposed framework performs in terms of our uh, proposed bias matrix. Um, as we can see that our proposed uh, debiasing framework uh, yield satisfying performance on debiasing the uh, six different networks. So how does the proposed uh, framework perform in terms of traditional uh, matrix? Firstly, we, we focus on the performance on utility. Um, as we can see that um, our proposed framework can achieve comparable utility performance compared with the vanilla GN, for example, GCN. And there are, uh, uh, there are um, experimental results uh, corresponding to other baselines in our paper. And I only present one here uh, due to space limit. And for fairness evaluation, as we can see that our proposed model can achieve uh, satisfying debiasing performance in terms of the two traditional fairness matrix uh, based on different graphical neural networks. And in the second part, we compare our proposed uh, uh, framework with other state-of-the-art GN debiasing methods. Firstly, uh, for utility, our proposed framework can perform uh, comparably uh, with these uh, adopted baselines. And in terms of traditional fairness matrix, uh, as we can see that our proposed uh, framework can achieve uh, comparable or even better performance uh, on debiasing. Finally, we carry out ablation study. From figure A and figure B, uh, we can see that the debiasing a uh, component based on uh, based on uh, the the two debiasing components uh, contribute to the debiasing of attribute bias and structural bias uh, respectively. And from Figure C, we can see that even if some components are removed from our proposed framework, we can still achieve uh, satisfying uh, utility performance on node classification. And from Figure D, we can see that. Uh, both of the two components effectively contribute to the debiasing performance in terms of traditional fairness matrix. And here comes our three conclusions. Firstly, based on our preliminary analysis, we can see, we can draw the conclusion that um, the input attribute networks for GNs are uh, signif significant sources of bias. Secondly, Due to the fact that we observe similar uh, tendency uh, in our debiasing experiments on our proposed bias matrix and traditional bias matrix, uh, we can uh, corroborate the validity of our proposed bias matrix. And thirdly, due to the fact that we can observe a pretty satisfying trade-off between the utility performance and fairness performance, um, we can see that uh, uh, we corroborate the effectiveness of the proposed debiasing framework at its proposed in this paper. And this is the references for this paper. And that's all for my presentation. And I would be more than happy to answer the questions from the audience. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Yushan, for your presentation. So anyone mm -hmm. who is interested in ask a question, I think uh, mitigating bias is really a hot topic recently. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can have a, um, okay, so if I, no, nobody would like to ask a question, I have one for you. So since I'm, uh, actually, I, I have no previous background in, in, in this field. So I, I'm just uh, very curious about the data sets you adopted in your experiments are they, so how they're yeah. curated or, you know, 
uh how they're what yeah how, how they are created or um so to these are biased in nature right uh yeah that is correct so, um yeah i'm just curious that so um i mean so mo most data sets have some sort of um a bias i i think intrinsically mm -hmm. right so yeah. so how, how to ensure that the uh, the the bias strategy works. I I mean, so generally speaking, uh, because you don't know the exact factor that leads to the uh, bias. Yeah. So I think both of the questions are pretty good questions. So for the first one, as you can see, that we have six different data sets here, and the former three is from uh, social media networks. So the pocket here is uh, uh, is from and a social application that is pretty popular in North Europe, I think. And the third, uh, the third network, which is UCSD 34, is from the social network on Facebook, uh, collected from the university UCSD between students. And as you can see that we have labels here for the, uh, 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 node classification, and we have sensitive features for each node. And traditional fairness matrix simply verify your expectation uh, difference for a positive uh, label prediction rate across the two uh, demographic subgroups. And of course, we also did some extension uh, on uh, non-binary uh, sensitive features in our appendix. Uh, you can check if you're really interested. I see. And that's basically the answer to the first question. And the second question, uh, could you repeat the second question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I mean, so how, how do you find the, the exact, so do, I mean, I, I, I remember that you have a so-called so a, a discovery phase that will, will um, to identify some um, bias factors, right? So how, how, how could you verify this is really a important bias or a factor that leads to the bias in the data set? Uh, yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, actually, uh, actually this, uh, the, the framework proposed in this paper uh, basically tackles, uh, tackles this type of topological bias and also uh, biased attribute distribution uh, in the input source of the graph in the works. And after we have uh, reduced both types of uh, bias in the data pre-processing stage, we can then um, observe better performance oh. on fairness uh, in perspective of traditional matrix. As a result, um, we can see that um, once we have done such kind of debiasing data pre-processing, we can achieve uh, better fairness performance in downstream tasks. Okay, then um, such kind of uh, data bias could, ex could exist to some extent in your input data source. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah, very mm -hmm. good. Thanks for your answer. And uh, anyone who would like to ask a Another question. Uh, otherwise, we can proceed to the fourth presentation. So, um, thanks again. Thanks, Yushan, for your presentation. So, let's yeah, move on you. to the. Oh, yeah, thank you.